Now I will tell you how to make gas from corn stalks. Corn stalks are a very abundant kind of fuel, but no one can do anything with it. In this video, I will show a working gasifier that successfully gasifies corn stalks. A little story about why I focused on this. One day I walked around a grain dryer discussing how to construct an industrial gasifier for drying grain with the chief of the facility. He showed me an industrial boiler on corn stalks as well as its fuel. I even filmed the video with the chief showing me these chopped corn stalks with leaves. The bulk weight of such fuel is 47 kilograms per one cubic meter. The chief packed it in small diameter bales to improve transportation to the boiler from the field. The bales lay there next to each other. I didn't film the boiler because I was not interested in it, but several million were invested in this particular boiler with an automatic feed line. And guess what? It could not work on the fuel it was made for. The chief of the grain dryer asked me to turn this particular fuel into gas because, as he said, he had thousands of tons of it. And commercial wood chips and natural gas were expensive and relatively scarce. This conversation lingered in my head, and when I found a very rare article about a gas generator made and tested with this particular fuel, I decided to make a video about it. Especially since yesterday, I had a conversation with a man, who asked what to do now, when there will be no gas to supply the country on an industrial scale due to the geopolitical wars. We focused on such fuel as peat and biosludge from urban sedimentary basins, which, in fact, is practically the same thing as peat. We also talked about wheat straw, which is so abundant in a year that it is possible not to import gas for five years. And today I remembered that dry corn stalks are also a very abundant fuel around the country. I think that millions of tons of it, like wheat straw, have also been accumulated and more is produced each year. Now let's discuss why this fuel is difficult to gasify. The fluffed fuel layer forms voids, and the low ash melting point does not allow to make a back-run gasifier similar to a wood-fueled one, because glazed pieces of ash will almost immediately clog the grate. The problems with this fuel are the same as with straw gasification. There is a video about the gasification of straw on my channel. If you are interested, take a look at it. It tells why this is a difficult fuel to gasify and why only we managed to overcome this difficulty. I have seen the schematics of Soviet gasifiers on fallen leaves and chaff. They are very similar to this gas generator. Let's take a look at it. I'll tell you how we got positive results, and if anyone needs a design of an industrial machine, I'll make it. I think it will work on straw, too. The experimental and industrial gasifier was tested by Chinese scientists twice, in 2011 and 2013, as can be seen in these articles. A small gas generator was built for laboratory tests. It is shown in the figure. It was an 850 mm high tube with an inner diameter of 300 mm. There was an auger conveyor on top of the tube which pressed the fuel. This is important for gasification because gasification goes better with a slightly pressed fuel than in a porous layer. Air was supplied from the tip of the auger. It was also supplied around the tube through the tuyeres located against the air supply in the auger. In the lower part, there was a rotating grate for grinding the sintering ash. The scientists experimented with the airflow rate to find the optimal gasification rate. The data can be seen in the table. Naturally, due to the low ash melting point, it was impossible to achieve the same high burning intensity as while burning wood, up to 900 kg per square meter. So, there was five times more resin than in the Imbert back run gasifier, from 4 to 7 grams instead of 1 gram. This can be seen in the table. The graph shows that the scientists increased or decreased the temperature in the reactor by blowing in more or less air and increasing or decreasing the combustion intensity. We can see this in experiments 1 through 5, as they increased the amount of the blown air, the quality of the gas also increased. As we can see, the amount of resin decreased in experiments 1 to 5, too. When the scientists added more air in experiments 6 and 7, it turned out that the gas got worse. 
So, the optimal amount of error was in experiment 5. In the same line of the fifth experiment, we can see that 2.14 cubic meters of gas were produced from 1 kilogram of straw from corn stalks, and the caloric value of the gas was 1,287 kilocalories per 1 cubic meter. The humidity of the straw was 6%. 0.28 to 0.32 kilograms of air should be supplied to one kilogram of straw to achieve an optimal air to straw ratio. Two years later, the scientists improved this machine with small changes allowing it to reduce tar by 10 times while keeping the same caloric value of gas. Gasifier capacity was increased by crushing corn stalks into 2 to 5 centimeters pieces and precisely calculating the speed of the fuel auger feeding into the reactor for optimal operation. I think that in order to survive the winter, we will need all kinds of fuel very soon. And there are millions of tons of this fuel. I will design industrial prototypes for anyone who needs them, my WhatsApp is in the description under the video.